Guys and girls, this is the last guest interview of the year 2023. End this year with a bang. We brought a guest who came to this show before and that interview was uh, pretty popular. I thought, okay, why don't we end the year with, with that special guest? But for those of you who have not watched that interview, I will let my guest introduce himself. Hey Raj, thank you for having <laughs> me back. Uh, my name is Roland Barcia. Uh, I work at AWS. I am a worldwide director uh, for our application modernization team, uh, covering all the worldwide specialists around container, serverless, and integration, including very smart and intelligent folks like Raj, <laughs> who is one of our deep container experts working with some of our toughest customers. So really excited to be back. I had a lot of fun last time. Yes. Hopefully you don't throw any difficult questions. It's all difficult taking, questions for a line. Take me off guard <laughs> or something that, like that. That's so, my goal. Oh, <laughs> you're going you're gonna to try to corner me. Yeah, yeah. So we'll see, but I have full confidence in you. Okay. But anyway, um, we, we chatted uh, early summer. Um, so what have you been up to this last six months? What have I been up to? Well, I've been traveling a lot. Right visiting our customers and our teams in different parts of the world. Yeah. So since we last chatted, I visited Israel, nice, Singapore, Hong Kong, Manila. Wow. I also visited some teams in London. Wow, okay. I've done a lot of different teams in the US, both right. East Coast and West Coast. Right. All visiting with customers. Right. And talking with our teams. I can say the second half of the year, we've been doing a lot of discussions with customers yes. around the area of platform engineering, mm -hmm. including data platforms, okay. and building really cool data processing, machine learning, and AI, including Gen AI, okay. together with application modernization. Okay. Uh, so I've been also working with some of our teammates across different teams, Okay. and so pretty excited about all the things I did in the second half, and of course, Preparing for reInvent, which we just went right. through reInvent and KubeCon right. uh, in Chicago. So yes. all of those things were things we spent time doing this year. Excellent. Busy year. So the year is ending. Uh, this is a good time for preparing for next year. Uh, so a lot of my viewers were looking to uh, switch jobs. Uh, so what are some of the trends that they should uh, uh, be mindful of and they should prepare? Yeah, absolutely. I think that obviously we talked a little bit last time, I think, about Gen, uh, about Gen AI. Right. I think in general, stateful workloads yeah. and data processing, things like Spark, mm -hmm. uh, things like machine learning, uh, not, not just Gen AI, but all AI and stateful use cases, streaming, Okay. is another area. People are really looking at modernization, mm -hmm. not just with compute. So we think about right. the applications and the use cases around some of these Gen AI capabilities, mm -hmm. but also about modernizing my data. Right. And so as an SA, uh, the word A, the letter A in SA is architect. Right. I think this is a prime time for architect to really think about being in the candy store. This is really the time where we're gonna be taking compute capabilities, yeah. taking AI ML capabilities, taking data, so like data lakes versus mm -hmm. data mesh versus data fabric, mm -hmm. and all of these use cases, mm -hmm. and really being able to work backwards from our customers mm -hmm. to solution these things together. So I would say ramp up on solutioning skills mm -hmm. and general architecture skills to build end-to-end -end solutions that cover applications, data, ML, AI, are mm -hmm. all extremely important this year. Got it. So I have a related question. When someone is preparing, is it advisable to go super thin on a lot of services? Or do you say, hey, pick a use case and go deep? Like Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so um, obviously, um, I'm being a little tongue in cheek here. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. So the, both is important. The, uh, the model that I like to think about, the folks that are most successful, yeah. have a T model, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So T means being able to go deep and have a specialty. Like everyone should have a specialty because it keeps you grounded. Because when you're a solution architect, right. you have an influence over all the other roles. So you have influence over developers, platform yes. engineer, 
security folks, observability, SRE engineers. Yeah. And so having depth in an area keeps you grounded. Mm -hmm. At the same time, the T is the breadth. Right. And so, but it's hard to be a domain expert in everything. Yeah. But there's probably these pillars that we think about. For right. example, if you are deep, a deep data scientist, mm -hmm. uh, you should have general breadth mm -hmm. around machine learning, databases, and domains, and the touch points with those right. domains, like mm -hmm. how those how you do integration with data. Mm -hmm. If you are a deep expert in serverless, so I'm a Lambda developer and I know sure. how to write Lambda code inside and out, mm -hmm. you still need breadth mm -hmm. around the application modernization mm -hmm. step. What do platform engineers need to do? Mm -hmm. When do I use containers versus serverless? Mm -hmm. And so think about the T model, okay. where the breadth is around a domain, okay. related domain, with depth in a specific area that you can roll up your sleeves, write code, or write infrastructure as code, or do DevOps, et cetera. Excellent, so T, okay, that's a good way to remember it, T. T. If you study that T, you will get the touchdown. All right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, another question, Roland, is um, a lot of the viewers, they already work in like traditional IT. They may mm -hmm. be a database admin, uh, they may be a developer, they may manage servers. What is the easiest way for them to transition to cloud? That's a good question. They can watch a lot of your videos. <laughs> that you is have, true. You have watch a lot of uh, yeah. great advice there. Thank you. I, I would think uh, have a North Star. Mm -hmm. So understand what is the job of a cloud engineer, a cloud mm -hmm. architect. There's probably a specialization. So if I'm coming from a DBA background, right. there's a natural progression towards modern databases. There's a lot of new, Gen AI has kind of driven a lot of data use cases. We have vector yes. databases yes. that are cool. Uh, machine learning, what is the journey of data, right? Mm -hmm. where, how, where does data start on-prem? How do I use it in the cloud to build analytic, machine mm -hmm. learning, Gen AI? So take a look at that progression. Mm -hmm. And I think there's a, a journey that you could take from I'm a DBA mm -hmm. to I'm a data scientist or I'm a data mm -hmm. engineer. Mm -hmm. So that's like one way to look at it. Same type of thing if I'm a, uh, an, a server admin mm -hmm. or even you have a mainframe background, right. right? So if you're a compute person, start to learn things like containers. Right. Uh, start to learn things like serverless. How do you provision these things? Mm -hmm. Infrastructure is code. Mm -hmm. what is, how do teams change? How do they work together? So mm -hmm. start to learn these things and progress from where you're at to where the North Star right. of that role is in the cloud. I like that a lot. It gives you kind of a, a structure or a framework. Mm -hmm. So you say, hey, I am a database today. What, what are the steps necessary if I want to move the data first to the cloud? Second, how to choose the database? What are the additional capabilities I need to exactly. learn to run the database? Right, how the code interact with it, that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. So you are just not learning in a vacuum, and when you are done, you kind of have the full end-to-end -end picture. Mm -hmm. It also like makes you sound intelligent when you answer questions because you know the full life cycle. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, if you're a data person, follow the data. Right. Where is the data going to? Right. And it's all about the journey, man. Yeah, like, <laughs> it's all about the you journey. You know, like uh, learning yeah. should be fun. Yes. Right. If, you, if you're not in the, if you don't love to learn. Yes. Right, and you're in this industry. Yeah, it's tough. You got to check yourself. Yeah. Right. 100%. So, like, follow the data or follow the compute. Yeah. Um, and and walk that journey. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a lot. It's a lot easier today. There's so many free resources out there. Hundred percent. Even yeah. if if you don't have financial means to yeah. to get certain courses, just a lot of resources out there today to get hands on. There's tons of examples. Yeah. So. Um, it, it's in many ways, it's a lot easier. I remember one of the yeah, first jobs yeah. I had out of college. Yeah. I, I wish I could say it was just the other day. <laughs> it's just the other day. Yeah, Roland. but, but I, both, my, yeah, daughters just, young, both yeah. my daughters just finished their undergrad, right? <laughs> so like, um, you know, the first job I was given was, hey, uh, we have this um, mainframe data. Sure. We need to call 
some backend system on some Unix yeah, servers. Yeah, yeah. And I had to actually pick up a book on sockets. Yes. I taught yeah. myself, myself how to code C sockets. Okay. And I wrote the application from like, there's only two or three books out there on that topic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and so today it's much easier to get your hands on yeah. data and you can. You could ask a large language model even, hey, yeah, what, yeah. what's my career path? Hey, what are some good code examples that I can right. learn from? Like, there's just lots of good examples out there now. It's funny because um, I used to have the big red IBM Men from Handbook. In some ways, you know, it, it was easier because you get a couple books, which whatever is out there, right? You read through it and then kind of you are good for the next few years. Right? You mean the red books? Yeah, the, yeah. Like remember the red IBM handbook? And yes. I used to code in like COBOL, DB2, Jesse, talking about data, vSAM, DB2, right? In mainframe. Same thing for Java as well. A lot of my friends run in Java. Once they learn the core components, they're kind of set, right? Uh, cloud is totally different because you always have to keep learning. Which the technologies, is, in yeah. general today, technology yeah. moves at a much faster rate. Faster rate, right. so, yeah. Mm -hmm. Which is great. Because before, if someone had, let's say, 10 years of mainframe experience, it's hard to get in there, to get the same salary as the 10-year experienced guy. But now, because it's moving so much, it gives a lot of entry point. Absolutely. Right? There's a lot of entry points. Yeah. A lot of opportunities. Right. Uh, and there's even opportunities with our customers who constantly yeah. have to adapt to new technologies. I remember... Yeah. Just five, six years ago, we're building cloud native things and technologies like Heroku and Cloud Foundry. Yeah, yeah. And everyone's on serverless and Kubernetes. Yeah. Who knows? Tomorrow might be some yeah. you know, Gen AI adapters that 100%. respond yeah. to automated prompts that the LLMs <laughs> reverse serve. Uh, LLMs are going to start prompting back at us and start talking back. Hey. You're talking a lot about LLM Gen AI. <laughs> it seems like this is going to take over our lives. Um, it's a fun space right now. Right, it is, yeah. it is. Um, okay, cool. So talking about what to learn, solutions architect, what are some of the good qualities that a SA should have, that you look for, or they should have in general? Yeah, uh, when we look at SAs, They should a... wear a Kubernetes sweatshirt for sure. <laughs> Not all of them. <laughs> Not all of them. A lot of data scientists will be like, what is Kubernetes? Well, Kubernetes I just want Jupyter sure. Notebooks. Jupyter Notebook, yeah. A lot, a lot of Lambda developers are pretty True. successful writing code. 100%. But yeah. Kubernetes is awesome, too. Yes, so, everything's um, awesome. Yeah. So everything is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> so, SA, so I look at a few qualities. One is obviously customer advisory. At, at Amazon, we work backwards from our customers. We're customer yeah. obsessed. And so... Um, are we advisors, trusted advisors to customers? So right. what are some of the things I could see that you've earned trust right. with customers, that you've worked and solved the problem customers had? Yeah. And how did you do that? How did you measure success? Mm -hmm. What were the measurable outcomes? I look at thought leadership. Mm -hmm. Thought leadership involves the ability to scale yourself. Mm -hmm. There's so many customers out there, so many developers, so many platform engineers, so many data right. scientists. You have a handful of essays uh, that can touch it. So what are the thought leadership assets that you're creating? Mm -hmm. What are the thought leadership code that you're creating? Mm. Also look at you know the capacity to mentor and teach. Yep. You're a great example of this. You're always Thank teaching you. on YouTube, I love teaching. right? Yeah. And so uh, being a teacher, mm -hmm. being able to mentor, mm -hmm. being a role model to others, people can be have these qualities at all levels, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. If you're coming out of school, mm -hmm. right, you could be mentoring other students. You can kind of show that. Right. Uh, uh, and that quality uh, is sometimes something that's natural, but something you can kind of build up. The other, The fourth dimension I look at is continuously reinventing yourself. You just 100%. talked about yeah. how quickly technology changes. Yeah. So your ability to transform technology-wise is the other thing I looked at. If if you're still working on the same technologies you're working right. on three or four years ago, and you know the industry is kind of just moving and you're yeah. an expert in that space, how are you challenging yourself today 100%. to solve the next generation of problems. So those are the yeah. four dimensions I look at. For essays, I feel like learning and be curious is one of the top things, especially mm -hmm. now. Absolutely. Because before, like, everything 
kind of was like isolated and you would have been fine just learning that one thing. But now, even let's say for Kubernetes, we have to learn how Kubernetes works with Gen AI. How can a company run their large language model on Kubernetes? Or how do you do the inference, right? How does the pipeline look like? Platform engineering is changing the whole There's, landscape. I don't think we've even discovered all the use cases and interlocks between platforms and Gen AI. Right. Does the platform help train fine-tune models? Yeah. Does it help host models for prompt engineering and inference? Is there a consumer case where, hey, instead of typing kubectl, get pods, right. I can be like, hey, command line, mm -hmm. generate for me a standard architecture, Kubernetes cluster that meets my company's criteria, right. say it in natural language, mm. and have it happen. So basically, generate EKS blueprints, but instead of someone going and putting a lot of effort into it, LLM basically mm -hmm. generating the blueprints that, that's for a, you. Yeah, that's a use case for sure. So those, these are We all, are giving away free startup ideas. Yeah, right? look at that. These are all, for, all different areas uh, that we look at from a Gen AI perspective. Like what are the yeah. consumer use cases? What do prompt engineers do? What yeah. do large language model tuners and providers do? Yeah. Like all of these, uh, there's a relationship between these things. Got it. We both love Kubernetes, right? So uh, one of us loves a little no, bit more. No, <laughs> I, I do, I do. Yes. I, I do. I just, I, um, I, I think that we Seems have a there's a breakup going on, Roland. No, okay. no, no. <laughs> Kubernetes is awesome. It's a great platform. It is, yeah. Uh, I, it's a great place for platform engineers to build platforms. Yeah. And we have a lot of platform engineers who are trying to solve their customer, which is developer yeah. data scientist problems. Yeah. Uh, absolutely. I also just want to make sure yeah. that we have a lot of customers like developers, um, data scientists, data engineers, yeah. Yeah. either use Kubernetes through a platform engineering team yeah. or they use serverless uh, and they can have a lot of success in all these models. Right? Yeah. A lot of customers still using serverless containers with Fargate, using ECS, like all of these yeah. like solve problems in the Gen AI space right. and the ML space yeah. and the microservices space yeah. and the event-driven architecture space. One takes a platform engineering approach and trying to standardize across compute models, mm -hmm. but sometimes I just want to get straight to value. And I 100%. think, you know, we actually just released uh, a guy, Josh Kahn and I, that talks about right. some of the pros and cons around those different models. Yeah, no, that's great. And uh, I'll just plug in uh, your talk here as well, actually. Uh, Roland did a reInvent talk, and that's one of the most watched reInvent talk on our uh, AWS uh, YouTube playlist. So go watch that. If you know best practices yeah. for certain things, yeah. if you have the engineering skills, yeah. you could make Kubernetes support almost every use case. This is general yeah. purpose, 100%. right? Yeah. To be successful at Kubernetes, you need a good platform engineering team to scale. Right. Yeah. To build lots of applications. Mm -hmm. Platform engineering teams that are good at upgrading clusters. Mm -hmm. Platform engineering teams that are good at providing different consumption models, whether it be cluster as a service mm -hmm. for teams that want to own their own cluster versus uh, deployment as a service. Right. Or platform as a service where you have some development teams that say, just take my code and run it for me. Right. And if you want to do things like event-driven architecture, there are technologies that you can combine like Kata and to yeah. scale the pods yeah. based on metrics okay. and yeah. Carpenter to scale the nodes yeah. and you can achieve behavior. Uh, conversely, you have organizations that run independently, have two pizza box teams, have very late light uh, cloud administrators and they're being very successful in some of those patterns. So things like event-driven architecture is yeah. scaled down to zero write a piece of code that responds to anything in the cloud, mm -hmm. Lambda's great for that. Right. Um, the Lambda is actually used by a lot of our EKS, Kubernetes yeah. customers, yeah. Yeah. as really the glue in the AWS. Glue, yeah. Like The fact that almost everything in AWS, I like to say, emits an event, yes. that I can write a piece of code and forward it to something else, yeah. that solves exactly. a lot of problems, whether it's IT automation, right. whether it's asynchronous consumption of messages, mm -hmm. whether it's incoming streams of messages to, to process data in a data pipeline. Yeah. There's a lot of, whether it's things that we used to call ESBs, 
Yeah, enterprise, enterprise service, service, service buses. buses. Yeah. Like, like Lambda is probably one of the best implementations of an enterprise service bus pattern. Yeah. People don't look at it that way, yeah. right? But combining that with some of the things in EventBridge and step functions with orchestration and mm-hmm. messaging rules, like all of that is very effective. So if you have a very event-driven system where you're you know, even doing a service bus right. or a service fabric or the data fabric, it might be very quick to get and wire things together mm-hmm. with Lambda. Whereas if you're doing a lot of processing, application, business logic, containers tends to, to, to be better. It's more natural for a developer to right. run locally, deploy into the cl- uh, deploy into the cloud, right. or sometimes you're running some things on-prem, some things in the cloud you want mm-hmm. consistently. Like All these different reasons exist. No, 100%. Uh, actually, one use case that I am seeing happening is uh, combining the event-driven with the Kubernetes or containers. Uh, So I'm actually meeting a customer uh, day after tomorrow. Hopefully it becomes public. It's a really cool use case uh, where they modernize their uh, legacy queuing system. Mm -hmm. They really like EventBridge. You know, EventBridge, how it gives you archival, how you can trigger different endpoints with different rules and stuff, uh, and no no, uh, licensing fee. But they wanted to keep the business logic in containers because they wanted to be portable. Mm -hmm. Right. So they stitched together replace the legacy queuing system with EventBridge, then a Lambda to a private endpoint to internal um, load balancer and business logic being processed by uh, EKS, like Kubernetes, mm-hmm. right? So that's, I feel like that will be more and more prevalent because customers are gonna use the right tool for the right job because like even, even Bridge, Lambda, SQS, they're awesome, Yeah. right? Well, one of, when I, I talked about my travels, Yeah. Uh, one of the engineers in China, Harold Sung, he's one of our serverless yeah. uh, specialists. Uh, we just published something on the AWS solution site around uh, uh, asynchronous inference or prompt engineering, yeah. right? Yes, yes. And it was a cool use case. A streaming the response. Yeah, so yeah. But we had actually all the technologies there. So it was like Fargate and ECS hosting the front end application. Mm-hmm. It was like a middleware web app. It was sending prompts asynchronously mm-hmm. to different model endpoints to get different answers back. Mm-hmm. So using a, a fan in, fan out pattern with nice. SNS, yes. SQS, yeah. Lambda function doing some filtering, mm-hmm. sending prompts to a model that was mm-hmm. hosted in EKS, nice. where they were using Carpenter and Kata to scale up oh, inference endpoints okay. based on metrics and sending responses asynchronously back through Lambda and event-driven architecture. So I was really excited about that use case because the web team wanted to use a quick serverless container thing to get Mm -hmm. with Fargate to get the web app going. You had event-driven architecture, sending prompts, being creative with sending multiple versions of the prompts and getting different answers to give back to the consumer and EKS using Carpenter and Kata all together. So to me, it's more... How can we use these capabilities together, together right. to build the best solution for our customers? Yes, yes. No, I love it, love it. I'll give the link to that uh, solution on the description. Okay, we just talked about reInvent and all the changes. So if you have to pick a like, couple of your favorite announcements from the reInvent. Yeah, reInvent was awesome. It was, was awesome. really busy. Yeah. I think I ran into you like once or twice. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, uh, our sessions, our chalk talks. That our chalk talks, yes. Yeah. For, for yeah. I, I would say obviously all the generative AI announcements. So like Amazon Q actually loaded yeah. it in uh, in my VS Code, and it's, I was it's asking cool. questions. It's really good. Yeah. Pretty pretty cool things like Graviton Four, Tranium yeah. Two, like all the hardware announcements around that. Uh, lots of different capabilities with Bedrock becoming GA. Yes. Lots of the models that are at large the language agents. models, the agents. Yeah. Yeah. All of those things are super exciting. Yeah. Uh, so really paid attention to those. Within containers, like some of the things we did are around uh, extended support, upgrade yeah. with EKS. Some of the cool things there that we did. Really excited yeah. about some of those as well. Some of the scaling things that we did with Lambda as well are pretty yeah. cool. So like... Lots of cool things. Those are some of my favorite off the top of my head that I remember. Excellent, excellent. All right, so that's all my technical questions. Now it brings me to rapid fire questions. This is a new tradition. Ooh, <laughs> Roland, nervous. You should be nervous, Roland. You should be nervous. Oh, no. All right. Um, you ready? No. <laughs> Let's go. That, that's the right answer. Let's go. Okay. Which movie character you think would be the best solutions architect? 
Which movie character yeah. would be Bilbo Baggins? Bilbo Baggins? Yeah. Okay, you like Lord of the Rings. Yeah, I think he, I think he was pretty creative on how he he got out of the cave when uh, Gollum. Yeah. With kind of the quizzes, how he kind of oh, saved, that's right. how that's he right. saved the dwarves from the spiders using the ring disappearing. I thought he, how he he helped them escape from the elves. Like, yeah. I think he did some pretty cool things. Excellent. I'll, I'll go with Bilbo. Bilbo. Madden. Okay. I was thinking you'd go with Star My Wars, but you have. <laughs> you, you surprised me. Uh, okay. You are in a zombie apocalypse. To what three gadgets will you choose? Assuming you have your family and stuff. Right? So, yeah. Zombie? Yeah. Uh, what three gadgets? Yeah. Uh, it, there'd have to be like some like fast fire gun or weapon, right? Sure, um, weapon. Yeah, fast fire gun. So, yeah, some, some type of like shield. She <laughs> like, I like it. Like, I like it. And then, you know, some type of cloaking device that makes me invisible. Oh, you know, okay. like that. Straight would... from Harry Potter. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> Mr. Well, Potter. Mr. Potter, roaming around at night, are we? <laughs> All right. Um, if you need to pick one song as a theme song of. AWS cloud computing of AWS. Yeah, what, what would that be? AWS cloud computing. See, I'm making you think now. You are making all those me questions think. were too easy. All the technical. Everyone questions. knows, like from the last interview, yes, my favorite knows. band. It could be a tool song. Since I just came from reInvent. Yeah. At the end of reInvent. Yeah. I went to the sphere sure. and I saw you too. Nice, amazing show. It's a beautiful day. All right. There we go. <laughs> it's a beautiful day. That's a, that's a good song. Yeah. If you have a time machine and where would you choose to go? Where and when? It could be future, it could be past. Year zero and Israel. Year zero Israel. Okay. Maybe, maybe 33 AD and Israel. Sure, sure. That's a good answer. Okay, if you could be any fiction, fictional character for a day, who would you choose? Fictional character for a day. Yeah. I like who I am, so it's, <laughs> it's not a desire that I yes, have at 100%. all. Yes, I don't want you to become some fictional character either. And just, but just for yeah, a day. You know? Just for a day. Yeah. Let's go with Woody Woodpecker. <laughs> Woodpecker. Okay, what movie is that from? That's a cartoon, man. It's a oh, it's a cartoon. woodpecker. Okay. Uh, you said fiction, like that's true. He, that's true. He he used to get under everyone's skin. Okay. And so, like, I like to jab someone a little okay. bit on the side. You are surprising me today, Roland, because I'm like, he's gonna pick like Skywalker or something because you no, know, like... you know, after the Last Jedi, I'm like, I'm out with Luke Skywalker. Yeah. He's like, he went from whiny to master and back to whiny. Like, I think, <laughs> I think he, you know. <laughs> all right, all right. Uh, Star Wars or Star Trek? You know. I've been watching more Star Trek recently. Yeah. I, I really like uh, maybe Voyager starting with season four. Like the character Seven of Nine is pretty okay. cool. Okay. Um, her, her journey from being assimilated into the Borg to becoming a human. Like, I really like that. I'll still go with the original Star Wars trilogy. All right. Because I think after the original trilogy, there hasn't really been great Star Wars stuff, True. personally speaking. Yeah, of course, yeah. All right, Star Wars, yeah, the original three Star Wars trilogy is my favorite as well. They are like awesome. Yeah, right? especially the Empire Strikes Back. Empire Strikes Back is like, awesome. Like if peak that Empire Strikes Back, yeah. Return of the Jedi, they, they nailed the landing. I will say yeah. the little teddy bears shooting the stormtroopers being so incompetent in that one, <laughs> being beat up with rocks. It's like, oh no, and they're like tripping and dying with rocks. We could see the trajectory already start yeah. going a certain direction. That is true, that is true. All right, uh, last question. If you, could if you could have a dinner with any person, uh, dead or alive, who will that be? I know your answer, pick a different person. It's gonna be Raj right now. <laughs> We're gonna have dinner right after this, right? <laughs> I mean, my wife. Okay. I mean... Uh, but you have your dinner with your wife all the time, right? You said that or like someone that I haven't had dinner with. Yes. Maybe. Previous yes. question. Someone I yes. haven't had dinner with. Yeah, sure. Haven't had dinner with, yes. You know, Andy Jassy and like, and, and yeah. folks that 
that run Amazon. Obviously, the, the you know, yeah. from the past, people that aren't here on Earth right now, you know. Yeah. Jeff I would love Bezos. to. Yeah. yeah, Jeff Bezos. <laughs> Jeff Bezos, would, I think, would be awesome because he went through such a transformation. Mm -hmm. Right, like walking in the garage, and he was like super skinny and stuff. Jeff right? Bezos for sure. I think. Yeah, and now that like, he yeah, created absolutely. Amazon, and now he's like mm -hmm. jacked and everything. Is he? I, I haven't, I haven't followed how he looks, but dude, he looks freaking jacked. Okay, he looks and he looks good, and his mental transformation. And you know what? One thing I love about Jeff Bezos is he's funny. Yeah, like you watch his interviews and everything, even though interviewers are trying to like nail him, grill him, but he always have like a great sense of humor. Yeah. I miss uh, Jeff Bezos' uh, like quarterly meetings. Sure. Yeah. And you know, I, I love our leadership now. Of uh, course. Like, yes. like, but absolutely. Yeah, I mean, I'm a sentiment because like when I joined, like Jeff Bezos was still the CEO, sure. you know, and he was running the meeting absolutely. and stuff, everything. Uh, uh, yeah, but anyway. Very cool. Okay, last thing. How can people people connect with you, Roland? LinkedIn is probably the best place. Mm -hmm. uh, look for I'll my LinkedIn the profile. Um, yeah, LinkedIn. LinkedIn? Excellent. Roland, thanks for coming again. And thanks for closing the year with the final guest interview. Mm -hmm. Everyone, have a happy holiday season. A happy new year. Wish you and you a happy 2024. Looking forward to this new year, connecting with all of you out there, and seeing, Raj, what new videos you have in store <laughs> in 2024. I have a lot in store. But thank you for the service you do of to course. our technical community, caring so much about teaching, giving inspirational messages from the background you had all the way to where you are today. Proud of you, my friend. Thank you. Thank all you, right. Roland. All right. Take care, guys. Take care.